You are watching Liberty Online TV. This is Liberty Online TV powered by Orange Sierra Leone. Orange. Good morning and welcome to the first edition of the program, The Breakfast Show, where they come to you live from Liberty Online Television, na Facebook, YouTube, and also na we website, where they powered by Orange Sierra Leone. We will bring the program come to you this Monday morning. My name is Kadeja Bangora. And me, I'm Abel Kaba. Good morning. Today is Monday, this, the 18th day of March 2024, and this edition of the Breakfast Show with theme na health. Also, we can look at the effects we push don't they get on young people and we don't they take a pass mark one this being them. Well, we have a particular theme day in the studio this morning. As we all know, over several reports, them national and international reports, them don't they come on this being them outside and they talk about the effect where the Kush drugs get on young people, them especially in the salon. In this being them, several organizations and civil society organizations themselves, but don't they talk about this past mark Kush where they say they now in the country and self well body workman and self don't they raise concern we make this being and parliament self being a concern but the past mark who should then say we young people in a salon they take well today at the program where they can look at different angle them and different aspects them waiting at some of the causes them and waiting governments for do now because of this particular issue we don't bring concern in the country now the studio this morning for can help we talk about this particular topic i want to welcome robert condema when a co-founder and chairman for health network sierra leone a civil society organization good morning robert and welcome to the breakfast show thank you very much for the pleasure for the other this morning for discuss issues of national importance all right and also now the studio we get Honorable Umfa Sori G. Koma, where they represent the APC in a parliament and they represent the Western Urban Bloc and serve as the spokesperson for the All People's Congress APC Party in a parliament. Good morning, Honorable, and welcome to the breakfast show. Good morning, and thanks for having me. All right, so they can look at this particular topic, viewers, as we don't tell on this morning, where they can look at health, and under the health, where they look at the PASMA Kush, where reports after reports don't they show, say, don't they unborg the population as salon, especially the young people, them. One part, then recent reports there, so, that the BBC I documentary we've been coming over the weekend, we raise so many concerns, and just for we viewers, them, for letting us say, the body we responsible, the national drug law, enforcement agency where government been set up for regulate and monitor the way how people they use drugs at the country. Liberty Online TV don't they try for get onto the chairperson several times but we're not able for get time you know they pick call neither respond or messages them but we'll continue with the discussion. Hopefully later on we will get them for join the conversation as Liberty Online TV continue for throw light on this. Let us start with you Robert Condema. We don't they see report after report and the latest one we come we a lot of people if you follow the conversation and go say not to this kind way salon for the internationally and the BBC I documentary we raise eyebrow on how the kush don't they unborg the lives of young people from una young CSO perspective what in our findings <clears throat> thank you very much for having me of course um, the issues who they can discuss now things were very very important 
not things we thought it's possible for the young people and going this way. And uh, as we speak, Western area, urban and rural area accounts for the highest number of intake of these drugs and more young people, them, which of course now cause for alarm. Of course, the BBC media make a, a documentary recently, of course, where now we really call for concern. Yeah, of course, we as a network, we don't provide leadership in the issue of those are outbreak issues and them, especially like with Ebola be kind, I would have the front leader, the COVID kind, I would have the front leader again. So when we see this thing, we decide for provide leadership in terms of uh, engaging young people across um, the country, especially for remote communities and fishing communities, um, we not need more young people and prone. Of course, this we all not gonna be happy as a Sierra Leone. Let's put the facts. Yeah, we got we got with brother, with sisters, and we don't kind of dig to this thing. We're really, really sad. Just last week, you see over that something where they go put a mask. It's really, really sad. And I think um, uh, we as a civil society advocacy of health and corporate governance issues, um, um, we think see, we're supposed to use a radical approach this time around. You know, where the Ebola become, you see what they put a state of emergency. We're able to curtail most of the, the transit points where people they go for this Ebola. And so if we, like the Ebola become, now we first take the leadership role. We are at that time. Nobody never calls for leg passes free to have people and they die. So we know the role we play. In terms of the government, it's emergency, states of emergency, it's the bylaws, involve community stakeholders, especially the local authorities and the chiefs, they're supposed to provide leadership in this direction. So, like, what you would look at, at this perspective, at the fact that um, this particular fight, like a concerted fight, irrespective of which political party belong, irrespective of your tribe or this, and the way things go, it really sad. Picky at the age of 18, 50 years, how long they took this thing? Look, like, one just listen, one gentleman, they, they go to the truck, they, they go collect the body, now I tell you, go to Africa, go ask them back there. It's really sad because we want for us to see young people go in confidence, contribute to national development instead of engaging in some then drugs and they, which have got a concern. So stakeholders involved, the pharmacy board, the law enforcement agency, even the NRU by extension, the the the, the custom duties what they what they do on there, uh, they monitor then drugs issues and they listen at the police border and they. So we all need to get for calm. The media. The politicians, um, with the CSO, how we all for come together, how we can do a radical approach. Because if we look at the lesson learned, which, whose approach should be used? Who will be able to curtail Ebola? You will know where Ebola is because you know, you know the kind of step, the kind of things where people they go. Now, because of the government stance, okay, let me use this kind of approach so that we'll be able to curtail Ebola. You see, that's the thing. But for now, they count the term they go. As we speak, Western area who are they account for the highest number. Of where they do the intake there. I think see a lot of sensation need to be done. Government just go for institute what we call the state of emergency, just like what the library I don't do, so that uh, we don't go a lot of young people are going to decide. Because I think for these are the leadership, I think for take up leadership. So if you see the need to go this way, so I don't even know. That's this this is about this is not about the blame game, say government, 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 job, job, job. Yeah. Um there are people it's about choice. If you choose for it, there are people the choice they go for them. Yeah, that's what they want to ask you. Many mm. people like how your organization they advocate for mm. their governments like declare a state of emergency or waiting need for be done for curtail this. Now see we plenty of people on the discuss around, but we don't go miss the discussion we go miss the discussion if we don't go back to identifying waiting at the cause. We make so many young people them they go that path at this stage. Waiting on I don't feel nothing at the cause. Well, apparently, um, because most of them may not take as a basis because of you don't get job, you will go lead to that. Yeah, there are people who not get job. We say get faith in God. Say I will, I will use his team. Now make we government carry into what we call the TV project. If you even government not give job, you get to go land their skill and able make money. No person in the world where government will give job to everybody. That's why government creates an enabling environment for the private sector for come. So that they can invest and employ people. Even like you say, you will create employment for yourself. Like you go to East Africa country, people don't rely on their government getting a job. They be so creative, then they create job business for themselves. Like go to Rwanda, Uganda. People they are then young with the age of 18, 20, they get a whole big business they want for themselves. Not only depend on government. So the basis are switching the same because of job issue. No, they don't look at from that perspective there. This is uh, inflation something in groups. Because we do a, a death story. Because when we met meeting, 
with the gold and nets and these guys don't bring it and we gotta get conversation on them. Mm-hmm. Whether are the reason why they take this then? I was saying I pay a group or that this because of say um, things are tough with or, or economic hardship, then say anything. But that of a point to you, what about your life? You don't care about your life? Look to me in the office now every day before the candle is step, then they pack them then full sweat. Well ask us what I'm saying, I call us not to call this. As a cold, you don't it, as it is not a cold. I say, why don't I go for intake this kind of thing? It's not good for your health. This you not know, to help you. They try to engage other activities instead of they take this kind of thing. Well, not, if, if I don't say not to just this, uh, this kusho, remember, we get to have a dollar become. You know, they have a dollar, they have a misuse, and they take away the lead to the entity. They, you know, pharmacy board, that like, is sure we're well established by an act of parliament, or they regulate the entity. They. Of course, what I will say, people have the import, they can't. Because government we don't put a stand moves for ensure say out there for look at the border because one of the key things we will find out that the poets of the border will border are not secure. They use the border, they come. So after the government don't say uh, public, they don't do public announcements, say X, Y, Z. Now you find out say people at, at that local level they manufacture and yeah, which uh, is a call of concern. Well, they can look at the supply chain. Yeah, sure. We now one of the. Major question we a lot of people they ask now say if you know the car inside the country and they manufacture them, how the young people them go get access to the kush. Well, viewers, in case you just they tune in the program at the breakfast show, and today we they look at the Pasma Kush where plenty of people get concerned but say they now at the country and they unbog the life of young people them just for pre- prepare on our mind them or get for play reports them, we get some image them, we most of them are not going to watch, but to just this viewers' discretion because they can show real time reports them and about 32 young people them with a bag na a mass grave na came to this being them all the reports that they will go play inside the program this morning so in case you know once for watch some of them things then they please with the reports and they play you can kindly lay your device for so the reports don't for play we continue the program and at the studio this morning we get a honorable member of parliament swena honorable umfa koma and they represent the western urban block for the all people's Congress APC party in our parliament and at the spokesperson for the All People's Congress. Honorable, you there this morning as the people's representative, although you do not the spokesperson for the All People's Congress. Firstly, as a Sierra Leonean and a very young man, where they represent people in our parliament and the constituent the makeup of young people. Waiting a union take on this issue we don't become a problem for Salon. Um, rightfully, rightfully, like you state, it don't become a problem. We don't take Kush not become a menace to the society. Um, Kush, nothing will do, will it damage with young people there. Pretty much, it damage the future of this country. Uh, Kush, the discussion around Kush, it don't go around for a while. But it's important that we get the conversation now. And uh, of course, very, peop- very a lot of people there from different blocks them, they try for take this fight against Kush. Nobody now will say in your community and not know somebody will get Kush. Even somebody who will say, says, nobody not in a family will not know somebody in a family will get, they take Kush. So I think, say, we believe, say, Kush to me is even an epidemic now. Um, of course, my co guest states say, a more prevalent than the urban and, rural, and western rural areas. But if you go in the interiors, the villages, then Kush did that in villages, then they. So which means it tell we say we all need for put we on the on deck for all fet this fet here. So means the approach get for be multi pronged, meaning you get for taken from the up, you get for taken from the top, you get for taken from the middle. Everybody in the communities, in them homes, in the in parliament, from the government, everybody. Because Kush gets a health issue. Kush gets a social issue. Kush also gets a political issue. And of course, there are a lot of finger pointing. But if we think, say, we we'll get for fet this fet head on, we we'll get for ensure say we all play with own concerted effort to ensure say we we'll fet this fet. And I make a gladi when I get this program today, because of course when I highlight what we do in our parliament in the last sitting, we me and the and the whip rise on two different issues when I stand in order them for call uh, parliamentary attention to the challenging and the troubling things that we did see in the social media space. Um, I'll be rise on SO19, SO19 pretty much, and for invite uh, relevant authorities them, the ministers them. SO19, 
when I stand in order 19 of all, invite minister then for can answer. So we believe, say, the minister of health, because I've seen a health issue for can answer. We believe, say, the social welfare minister back for can answer, because the video me see, whether they shave people ahead, it be troubling to me, because it gets a humanitarian aspect of it. Um, the dignity of life, you know, bringing people in public and shave their head. I mean, the effort is laudable, but the manner in which it, um, it was handled really touched me that anyway, I feel the parliament for beginning get that conversation day. And to note, when we bring and come up, we not say, not a partisan issue. This is not a national issue. And an issue where we all forfeit, and it get for start somewhere. And it does start now the social media uh, space, now it is kind of the, the, the mainstream media. And as mainstream media, they take our things, say, we get for see, which in a, we get for brainstorm on how we go fetch them, for law offend the solution to her. So and as a nation, what's in parliament, what's in parliament thinks that we miss them, we make the numbers and the increase as they go by? Well, first, we'll not, we'll not take that proactive measure, like a uh, um, co guest be the state say, when Ebola or Corona come, the country begin quarantine people there. So in this Kush epidemic, we don't get stories of people that we don't, um, we don't quarantine themselves. I get a testimony from a young man we are used for seeing Namios almost every day. Then for, all of a sudden, I stopped for seeing Namios. So two days ago, he kind of asked to me, he said, he can't break fast with me. He said, honorable, I say, how is this problem with you? Because I'll be asking him, I'll be not get a conversation with him. He said, I get for make my sister and lock me inside my room. Say, lock me inside my room and ensure say, everything that they do inside that room day for one week. He say, and he explain all the challenges they go through, which means quarantine or rehabilitation that you will get for pay attention to. Because we don't get a many, many addicts them already who will get for re a bring back to life, bring back to normalcy. And if we're not quarantining people in day, it will be a challenge. If we're not feel, feel a way that we need for rehabilitate them, it, it will be a challenge because the Kush business is driven by demand and supply. Mm. If people are not there to buy it, the supply, the people the suppliers are not going to see reason for doing. Sure. But on the other end back, we get for tackle them from the sideway, the kind side, or the side where the talk city, the manufacturer. We all get knowledge of, say, there are chemicals that are being imported into this country where they create the manufacturing of the Kush and the respective uh, labs. Then. So, both of their approach and they need for be taken into account. And like you state, when I invite the when I try for reach the National Drug Law Enforcement Authority, yes, they self need for take the fight, with or without resources. We need for see the effort from the side. We need for see the pragmatism from the side. As we as parliamentarians also need for be pragmatic and take the fight that the communities by interfacing with the young people and women are mostly affected by this menace. Not a secret, say, on our stakeholder, them get the information, say, the chemical, then the important kind of the country. Not a secret, say, on our stakeholder, them, no, say, they don't create labs, then they are so, when they mix the chemical, they are so, for it become a very dangerous drug for tick. Now, on don't stand on the various SODM for invite the Minister of Health, invite the Minister of Social Welfare. How much on I will take this issue very serious with the source the moon I don't get now and ensure say the one them way for they in charge, example, the law enforcement agency, the police, the soldier, how on I go make sure say they go out there and make arrest of the people there or they bring and Kaiser. When you ask the same question, it, 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 it forced me to for think about what in this Kush challenge. And the reason why we struggle with her mostly. Kush is being driven by greed. People then feel say na a way for enrich themselves. Most of the people them way probably the room or say they party the business. Now people the way without Kush can live a decent life, but they are driven by by greed. Similarly, so law enforcement authorities them all for for ensure say they are not influenced by money in doing their own job. We need for safe salon. We need for no say if the young people they all be destroyed by this drug here, yeah, we not get a future. We don't know can uh, uh, take care of this country. How are we going to think as a nation? So yes, there are some people that believe, get the conspiracy theory about it. But if we get them different thoughts about them, they will not go to fight and head on. So that make I think say important for le all the relevant authorities, um, the drug enforcement, the police, the judiciary, when they, they bring them people there to justice, for ensure say 
they don't undermine the, the, the privileges them or the responsibilities that they don't give them. And let them, let them actually let them take, not be driven by greed. Because that is the last uh, stop. If you don't have, then charge somebody to court, then people are limit for face justice. We don't see a situation wherein somebody they don't bring that court, they don't care who not jail, they don't lock up, it come back to the community and it become even more uh, 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 potent or copious or more uh, more in, more involved in the business than the term and the locker, which means it don't interface with all the authorities that over prevent them from doing it. Now they don't get away for lay. It, 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 it do more of the business because when they get a report send it. So really, everybody get for be a watchdog, and everybody get for feel say this now with responsibility for drive away is kush, and that we should not be pointing the finger because when you point one finger, four fingers will be pointing at you. All right, continue for the return of the program. Honorable Umfa, in case you just tune in, the breakfast show, they continue. And today, we they look at the PASMAC Kush intake among young people them in the country. We don't become an alarm. In case you say for the watch, we get questions, you get concerns, you get comments, send in the comment section. Now, any of the platform the way they watch, we don't forget for share the program so that more people go join the conversation this morning. All right, we continue with the breakfast show, and as we tell you now today, we they look at the effects we cushion the get by young people, and we don't take and pass mark one this PNTM. This make liberty online TV go work on a different community, them Osai. We go get first hand information from people where don't they take cush and plenty pan, and now they call on government and other body them for support them, let them tap for the take this cush. The first stop now the Krube community, Osai, plenty young people, and they where don't they take this cush. We report that. David Yanke, she say, bingo wakade, and adisi brinkam. The effects of Kush, when I go among young people, them na salon. Now one we don't get serious concern. Tell us how they sound. Because of the how this drugs they kill young people them. And one set of people them where this Kush don't embog na young woman them where they take and pass mark. Because of this concern, make Liberty Online TV go work on the Kube community for talk to woman them where they take this Kush for no waiting at some of the reason them we make that they take this Kush. Yeah, because I can't street. What kind of streets are beginning to this cush here? So the cush where they smoke, I stress maker the smoker. Because what smoker, I stress the easy. Now one of the, the bombers today, I have been moving on a day, I buy that thing, they give me a lot to go. So I do go, the cash is the thing they make, but I'm ready for it. So I do go, I feel like I say, I get money, I just say, I didn't find somebody to live. So I'm back to that begin buy the smoker. As you don't listen to some of the reason them we make the woman they are they take this kush, but at the same time the woman they are need help for make them tap for take this kush. And this kush here so they are the same one on the car. They make me body the art, the body the money me the young what are they want me I And most of me company they smoke this drug here so they get so fruit. Yeah, so they don't sick, they don't die. Even me company yesterday, now government and can't take him body they go they go better. And this thing, I will work really ready for life. I mean, really met me, they talk to me, I really for life this thing. And but when all day for me, me left this thing also. Because I went to the addict and my system. Because for my, I begin to smoke crush. And one day, I feel no one day swell and they get so. For the only thing I want to be body now, in the beginning. I want to come out of to life. Me, I the back of our government, if they get help for help me, may they help me. Me, I am not say for another person, no, but me on side. Me, I want to change, I want to leave that thing there. I'm going to be really fine. I'm not happy with the smoker. Because one, some man don't get bad name. Some man don't die. Some man don't get penda. Me, like me, I don't know for the others. Me, I don't know about this too. Any kind of stress they under. But the kush, I know saying I don't make I don't deteriorate to more and more. Leave if I want for left out, but if I don't smoke, all in the body, the heavy power never do not pass the smoker. If I okay, me if I get more help, I want left five. If I flush me, my left kush because kush, you know fine. Just like how woman them na the Kube community, then a victim of Kush. Now so woman them back na other community, then they'll be victim to Kush. Where this na cause for concern to authorities them for see how then go able to put measures in place for reduce the way how young people then they take the Kush as way for help save their life. For Liberty Online TV, 
mais n'a pas dévié en si c'est des reports. All right, we continue with the Netflix show. We come to you live from the Party Online TV, on Facebook, YouTube, and also websites where they're powered by Orange Sierra Leone. In case you just join with, the topic we look at this morning na health and under health, we focus on the Pasma Kush, where young people and other people in the country they take now. And we continue the conversation from the Kube community, Liberty Online TV, continue for work on a different community, them, outside and they talk to people, them, especially the victim, them, we they take the kush. We reporter Al Hassan Kuma Bingona the Kinjimi community and talk to young man them where they take this kush and then tell us some of the reason them we make them they take them. Hello viewers, uh, this is now Liberty Online TV um, with me Al Hassan Kuma. Well, present within uh, the Kinjimi WAF, who say we have plenty of people we they take drug and one of the most renowned drugs so far we plenty of people know about now the country where they cause a lot of problem for youth man them now the drug we plenty of people call kush and uh, of course we are there with some of them young money are where they take the drug and now if, now an opportunity for like i able to talk with them why then actually they take this drug and waiting at some of the reaction them you know we they happen to that young man you know say now friendship they make we all they go into this year and really and truly why they talk to you so tears they on me eye because i know say i don't be into this tear don't know seen nobody influence you of course we know the outro like you left you know now the feeling okay. sometimes i disable to the older and i know they take them and the drug but where i don't take them i can feel bad i know they feel that i know they active to the way for for do any other thing this drug yeah what it's a car they make a get appetite, make her able to eat, you understand? Mm. Then if I'm able to, if I'm not sick up for the day, me bond the only at at me join them, me join them, the at at for me. Mm. But I take and so also like you keep me. I will feel back normal all the day. Okay. Yeah. You know, can get any side effect, something or can hurt by you they take the drug or you know they prepare for left? Well, I, I'm actually on. I mean, I left the drug because of the cow to me so they were unable to understand my system. Cow to me rash. Other half have seen like I can show yourself with the cow to me. Yes, it's in touch to me. Okay. Why do for the day not take a? It can bug you, but it take a so it don't make feel I I I be the. I want first for make a left. I make a last one until I make a able left with the drug. Yeah, by God, in power, inshallah. It feel good, but this drug because okay. from 2019. We I begin for smoke this drug. So start with what I start for smoke and first it begin make me like that the craze. Sometimes they even hold myself, they try for kill myself. Yes. Say we don't addict inside me now. I they smoke them four five. Actually business I can smoke uh, someday I can feel happy. And the day when I smoke uh, I feel like my leg and my body the weak. Yes, I did so much. As I smoke, I so I okay back. So, what thing make you begin smoke this kush? I make I begin smoke uh, uh, a stress. Yeah. Uh, body smoke uh, the courage. Do I need smoke? I need happy. I need to be fine. So you happy with me? Oh, you don't get enough for life? Yes. I'm, I'm glad enough for life. Uh, we know the right now. So as we don't talk with people, we they take the drug. Um, how this drug that affects them as young man them in the country. We also deal with somebody where we don't they take the drug, but they don't decide for life for a very long time. We will can share experience with we on how they don't they see the differences the same way they take the drug and now we know they take the drug. Now the business one they take again and they feel development in my system and they feel development in my own family. Now the business what don't they find they do things there one who say yes, he expects to me. And he do things there, one who say, he writes to people then. Then the tell will be the smoker. For more left for now, I see development in my system. So how long you don't left for take the dog? I be don't left for long doing anything day because I go jail them and cause trouble they want to push. And they sit down no more, I don't meditate. If not, they eyes I sit down. I get feel like they have to jump, and they jump. So I decide my mind, I go jail them for problem then one of a good jail. I they jail now, and I say I decide say I for left farm. Indeed I left farm. 
and one left one out with development what they see in my system a damn true 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 waiting and call so waiting at the message you mm -hmm. want to send out to the young man and still waiting to this drug well now me and they tell me me young one them and my brothers they would depend on the drugs see let them left them this drug is not good this drug they kill people then right now this drug they disturb brothers and sisters then right now and they make your brothers and they pull so foot and they make your brother then they candle and they make your brother then then they, they, they swell swell and they make your brother then they thief your brother they not they not, they not, they not get shame so me and they beg all my brothers then this it's let them left them this it's uh, not good for we as you don't get um from the people where they take the kush we don't raise plenty concern as most of them say they no one for take this kush at all now party lead them to uh to this particular drug but they don't try as hard as possible for make them left the drug but of course they're not able for left the drug at all so this don't create a lot of concern and this now something we don't speak volume for people in Sierra Leone with regards to youth man name we don't engage into this particular drug but of course are they with uh, the chair lady for this community, we also are a victim. We in Peking, we don't they take the uh, don't they take the drug, and it's still there into the drug. We want for can share an experience as mama and somebody we don't live with young man them in this particular community. For any comrade in a salon in general, would they feel the pain? How we begin and they behave right now with we, where even some don't do lost their life, some don't lost their senses. So what is the message you want for saying out there? The message out there is do ya the picking them now we born them or not get side for to weigh them. We the big proper government and we always they do that. So NGOs, any country out there we get interest over we now yeah. Let them bring a help because some of them don't truly go out of hands. As you know, you hear from the Charlie Dina King Jimmy, we they advocate to the government of Sierra Leone for intervene in service and go able for save the youth man them in the country because the drug don't affect them diverse way across Sierra Leone and we only follow the social media don't they see say plenty young man they don't they die after this drug and most people who well, we don't talk with this afternoon show say now because of um, ignorance or not because of a friend will lead them for let them take the drug and this don't create some problems we make none of the able for left this particular drug again and plenty of people under this concern say anybody with a smoke kush it's difficult for let that person they left for take the drug so this don't create uh, a, 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 a concern for people in the country and also people hold position for see that government intervene and see how they go before help the future leaders because these people here are the future leaders for tomorrow yeah. and our only government go for help and intervene and save the life of them people they are yeah. for liberty online tv al hassan koma the report All right, so welcome back. It's the Wajibak Fashion. Another report we're gonna of Oman and Mandem. We don't they take Kush. Some of them don't live, but some of them they we still don't they take Kush. And from their reports, then they will report and then put together. We they come now the studio for can talk to the studio guests them as we continue the conversation on the theme when our health and we focus the on the effects where Kush don't they get on young people. Them I come over to you again. I'm Robert Condema. As we be the play the clips them as young person. What's me to go through your mind? Where you see test and hear testimony of a company, young people, and where this kush don't they affect bad one? Um, it's really, really sad. Yeah, really, really sad. For let like you see young folks and the base, so and more like we young opportunity to travel part of the world, like East Africa, West Africa. I see the young, young people so be progressive. Uh, this don't really should say uh, what we need a collective fight on this thing, um, irrespective of your status or irrespective of your tribe or religion. This naturally affects the society. Yeah, um, look like a case where they might make a talk. Now my man and one get picking. Maybe say that bopa. Even picking where they go to school, they didn't this, they didn't, they didn't take up this uh, cool stuff. When I'm a go down so far, I said, I am going to pick it for can. We go down go down book, let go kaipa. Now look, I don't go to this again. 
even like like I mentioned, like Eastern, I get some people and where they call me because what we don't do, we don't put a free toll line when they call our office and give response and coordinate to the law enforcement agency and see how they can put a response team go to their committee and they, you guys start the committee with my because say, boy, Mr. Robert, he said, look, this more give a I get. It don't go this area. The boy don't even left the house. Even this as we talk. Now nah, shell. The, this lady when I pastor against the the, the land the land landlord and place for ch uh, church because of that pastor they pray for that woman that body that brother went away now the pa don't give him a notice and don't give him picking. Well, yes. Now we look at the seriousness yes. from the relevant stakeholder. Them you just make mention of Liberia where they experience the same thing, but the government declare them as health emergency. Salon also declaring health emergency or state of emergency in on new, especially on issues them when of national interest. But from not so now, this Kush conversation starts. I remember way back last year, sure. we bring in experts, doctor them, we can give real time statistics. Yeah. But up till now, governments not take any moves. So we go show say they are really serious about fighting this particular problem where the population of Salon they face now. How serious governments be for fetch this issue? Well, as we speak, the, the trend like I'll tell you, so the, the trend don't they take different dimension now. And then um, governments, especially from the office of the chief minister, don't decide to put a formal a tax force team for ensure say how we able to address this problem. Not to today that tax. No, no. Come up. Now this still that happened last week. Where this mass bag I don't take place. So government will take out to the utmost seriousness now for say this. It don't it don't come up and play. Please uh, not to pass story business again. This uh, evidence based this. Say this, we really need to take a radical approach. In terms, and that is why, as we come on, also, we don't put, we come up together with press conference and write right and come up with the resolutions them and recommendation them based on the use the Ebola experience. The Ebola experience, how they use for fights now, this, this, this crucial. So, government will provide leadership. For instance, the law enforcement agencies, them, the police. If a police is starting here, they work for a push. Now, some of the complaints they come, say, when they go for do it, they even need to go take something from the people. Them. Which of course, I, I, I call for concern. So the police get all for play. Even like certain video they go, they see then the police are there in for the neighbor back in this thing. So they say for go for this thing. So the police, the IGP, for provide leadership and show say how they will able to go to those communities and they would have been able to identify. Because not, not the two eyes. Well, before it go to the community, then as on side, it will come up. Yes. You make mention of a task force yes. where the chief minister set up when a very long time. Mm. If they, then that particular task force, they be serious mm. for tackle this problem. You know, things say by now, they for don't identify the roots outside this particular push they come up. Well, first of all, you don't say there is an agency where shall was act, the law enforcement agency. What the, minister, what the chief minister did, and for ensure say engage the leadership. Now you find us when they appoint Jack Akai, you see they 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 they, they, they always don't play for go to communities them, especially deprived communities where them about the agency and they for ensure let them disengage them for this because one it have to be a bottom top approach. First of all, what what are you get for sensitize the people? Let them understand the danger, the implication of where they take that thing. So if it's sensitization not there, you know just say grab bubble go for what and do. Well, let the information it's called communication is power. We still then at the area of sensitization. No, that don't pass. Communication that don't pass because from since last year the effort won't take place by the, the law enforcement agency. So now this still the happy of recent what happened so last week. These all call for a real state of emergency, like I like I don't know. And just say the people the people that they, they manufacture this tier, let government take on book and other for institute by law, either for the, the law enforcement agency like the judiciary, how this government will make a paper then put a paper now, then go put on a parliament say if you want to ensure they say the police team, if they go to this jail and you pay this kind of amount, you they pay this money and you go to jail. So we gotta take this in serious. Even like in Rwanda, when I say even when I drink, you drive with drink and you they go to jail, you pay back money back again. Not to say when go, they, you go they go put in a jail, you they pay fine, you they go to jail. So government ensures will provide leadership in that direction. We are in the one who they produce, you they go to jail. And they pay back fine. So go back for institute and go table like private motion bill. Who about do that Because this thing, we now we don't take part this fight in the, in the health sector. We will not go sit down young people they go to this again. Who about the a private motion bill? What they send to parliament or go and then go to put on the citizens will get the rights. For sure, these are concerns. These are this parliament for do. 
and show say the institute this law we will make them people are they are because they might get they won't pick them because they may influenced by peer. Look like what you they say, this lady they say. They all look to they talk, it don't make sense, say, um, because of uh, stress. Stress in what sense? So because of stress make you go for take the kush? So Robert, mm. at this stage, if not who we'll say waiting we don't the year, mm. say most of the one them where they hand up on this kush business na salon, mm. na people na top ranking positions in government. Mm. How for handle and when are the same government people look up to for tackle this? If not then self self, then hand did it. How for handling kind of situation? Well, you yeah? know, we know go. We as a civil society, we believe on evidence-based action. We know they go by what you must say, says ever they call. We have to prove what all reasonable doubt. You don't see the law. What's for be a fact? Mm. What's in it for be done? Whatever jail the people are involved. That's a fact. The one that you feel be a fact because the guys are very scared by social media. What you know that they say? We believe on evidence-based action as a civil society. So if you believe us on a fact, the government for name and shame and just say the people on jail. All That's right. the fact. Law bring you in honorable. This particular issue they talk about now, it don't become alarming. Fingers they point on certain people they now they accuse them say when they bring in drugs for waste the life of young people them, when they become wealthy, when they flaunt the wealth back now people they face this them. And the same government again where people when they call on say law affect this issue. Now they among them big names and they come out. So the seriousness of government in all of this, una self a stakeholder because you as a member of parliament, you get a role for play. Absolutely. How una go and show say, una stand firm and call out the people that were responsible for this problem na salon. Well, actually don't call on government. On that day, day when we when the discussion starts, when the conversation starts in the parliament, we think say timely or imminent for let government declare a state of emergency. And because uh, section 29 B and F give government that authority for declare a state of health emergency. If we can note back when we had the rape issue in a salon, when rapes them, they happen rampantly because of the abuse of tramadol or other issues, eh? the government declared a state of public emergency. And when we raised that, the leader of opposition, Honorable Abukabo, raised them, the government bench say, well, law will take them in a graduated step. Law begin call the relevant authorities, eh? law we know if. Then we will know, we will know who side the root the, the root cause of the whole thing. But we think, say, it all past that stage, you know. We really think, say, we need to take steps. And when we when government declares state of public or health emergency, then it will make and clear, say, if you're not government authority, you handle this rubbish, or if you're not a person of high caliber society, you handle this rubbish, you will not be a sacred cow. The government will go after you. For them to able to fix this problem, you know things say the first approach now for identify the supply chain, also in the manufacturer, also in the maker. And as I stated earlier, not so secrets against a lab then they in this country. You know things in a time for them to go out there and do search. Absolutely. It is high time the search is done. But like I stated earlier, people are driven by greed. And some of the people they already trust safe for doing they undermine government in effort by not doing it. Because for let go take such, for let go such, the member of parliament will get authority for such. Of course, we get uh, authority for go spot check and check places there. But when you talk about illegal drugs, you know, say there are issues of safety back if you are going to the air and But like I say, everybody hand for day, let everybody know say in a watchdog. If you know certain place and they day, begin calling out. Begin call the out. Exactly. And you know, the issue about drug, uh, this kush business, we also know, say, it get a, a mental effect issue on the young people. Then. Easy for us to say, okay, left this drug here. But when you're addicted, you get a dependency, it had hard for do. And they all express how they, they feel with an autism. And they only cry for help. Now we get for pay attention to the cry with the cry now for help. The young yeah. people, they need we. Means the Ministry of Youth of Affairs also need for kind. The young people they need with attention. Youth commission. So, but we know for the go and then community, then they would they arrest the young people. We are law no side they come out. In the fifth parliament, we will not invite the maritime, the customs for let them come. But due to the calendar of parliament, they all will come. So their authority, their entity, and they also will for see how then chemicals they they can inside this country. Whose channel they come? If not through the airport, we have to be more proactive. Mm. If any government authority find found uh, undermining government efforts, then for jail them. Then for jail them for a very long time. Right. 
very, very long time. Even life imprisonment now something we need for consider in this whole thing fight. Exactly. All right, continue for the with we now the program Honorable Unfa. We they go now and listen to the head of burial team now the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, Sine Kamara. We call on President Bill. He say if we take strong action against people them where they bring the Kush can the country and say if we call on Parliament say then say for join the fight for talk for let them take strong action against them people there. They talk this way, they talk about the 32 young people away, he say, then be back last week inside Wama's grave in King Tom. He explained more to Princess Pierce inside this interview. 18th of March, 2024, it was really a sad moment for we as a nation. For little brothers and sisters, then, how much of them, 32, die now streets as a result of Kush? We need the gun door say now Kush because one most of them body there 99 percent of them would make a pull one percent now we one baby included when now one day now now what is self he die from rest now kush because they all get the so food and we examine them and all the histories them who we'll get from the various communities that will pick them body there now then confirm them also we can do we facial autopsy on them because we get a whole department of pathology where we get the hospital, they do very well because Connaught Hospital and they provide the site for keep them, for the people and can identify them. And the Freetown City Council, kudos to our lordship, the mayor of Freetown City Council, and they provide for the cemetery. So you see, so most of them body there, like if I tell you, this is not the one they will keep. Okay. This is not the one they will keep. Unfortunately, every day the Freetown City Council, together with we support, with a bed close to every day, either one or two or three or four. Due to a kush. Due to a kush. So them body they wanna be you say in a different community. Who's, who's community they wanna look at that pick pick them body on a street form? When you know the media now, I will call and no go be surprised to you. Like the Congo tongue na the bomb inside. We go the tears, what I go come on a yeah, you know. For for easy you come to human beings, a lot of so food, see they go push outside hog then they outside the day with all type of dirty. You see, you come with motor man, they live there. You come out there, you can't, uh, um, um, they move off. You know? And right now, I'm not telling me, sister, it's very difficult. In fact, Eastern, um, Eastern Police, now come on side. And this is, uh, I don't call this, it's a near batch of seats for me to talk with my first seat. Now come on side. Then Garis is seats. Then Kisi. Then Lomli. You know? It's like Kush Pone area no more. That's how they pick it up. You go see, you know? In fact, the community, because now we don't get community um, support where somebody die because everybody they fear. Say, if this person die now, now if we come for can support, then we feel say like now we don't kill her. Most of them, probably already die from pushing. All they already know them and then community system. No, say they are uh, push addicted somebody. Okay. You know, they can do advice, they advise, they advise them. But when they can die, because we don't sabi the family member. So they say, Kimelek, no, no, understand. Okay. If it's a man sabi and seven, we like no, no, understand. You know, because of tomorrow, tomorrow, no, no, can say, now, Mr. A, with that person, me, then I go back. I want to about, we say, I don't police them. They do investigation, all is about, we then say, somebody, possible report, me, possibly me die, but this person, I come back, and then they waste time now for good luck, you know, sir. Okay, so out of the 32, then they probably make mention, say, one, now, young baby. Now, young, young people, they get. I must man in there, I must man there among them. We get 25 male and 7 female. Okay. All na young, young people, they age they below, I must. Let me say, Lord, begin to come from. Let me say from 12 years, 15 years, 17 years, 20, 25, 30, at least 35 years. But we get at least so 1 or 2 percent, about 40 people. Uh, 40 years of age because we get people in the way even a mature somebody they see where they take the drugs and community you know you go so hopeless you know you know my sister this i call for concern actually you know for as a nation and manpower towards any country we want to develop now the human resource capital index and we know saying that one of the presidents in priority now he make my question is that we are, are the lawmakers we are our members of parliament you know and the president is just a one man. This thinks the parliament should have been call upon the IG, call upon the National Drug Enforcement Agency. We know that Jayakaika is doing very well, you know, since he took over the National Drug Laws Enforcement Agency. In fact, he has supported 
once our burial. They don't support one of the burial who do the last burial. Before this burial now, they say thanks to Barry Help Foundation. We itself get a campaign team where they say, say no to drugs and support you financially, okay. you know, because it's okay. difficult at times for getting cash and cash. At times we could also because now one must grieve for the burial. Okay, so now we start, we start and now the King Tom Cemetery will bury them. Okay. Now the King Tom Cemetery and now one must grieve who can put all of the corpses. And uh, now you make at the count to the the advice of the youth. Let me advise. Let me yeah, talk to the to the law to the lawmakers. You know, mm -hmm. you know. It's excellency the president. We know that you can do it. You know, you know somebody we. I know say this don't be na notice now na make we don't really say parliament self don't begin involved on this issue. But now for take a strong step, sir. Take a strong firm action against all those that are responsible in importing this drug. Our brothers are dying. We don't know the type of chemical mixture they did. We don't know whether this this kush whether it is the imported or the that the raw material they come or they can process and you know. So do you his excellency the president, you know. Uh, during the um, the the world and uh, mental health day, we all get you Dr. Jalo, we are the psychiatrist doctor within in charge. We get we talk about the kush, and he even give a prefab solution in future. If this kush continue in Sierra Leone, we go lost half percent of we brothers and sisters. We don't say the woman them will us with. So with this kind of menace now we there among young people, which are your advice to the one they will take him? If you get a role for playing in society. If you fashion these socks, look, you come in at 37 and 32 will go back so. Every month, if you not back 10, we go back 15, we go back 20, we go back 25, we go back 30, we go back 40, we go back 50. It depends on the increase. Okay. Like if I tell you no more, what in cancel will they back, will they back together which we support every day? What in cancel will they back together for accumulator? So then are close to 60. Okay. Trust me. Even the first grade before I go back yesterday, the first grade then the they before I started, now four days, now four days, then go pick that kid. Different people, before, in fact, people in shop there, they go die before. All right, so we continue with the breakfast show. When they come to you live from Liberty Online TV, that's our Princess Pia. So they talk to Sine Kamala, the head of burial team. Now, the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, maybe they talk about the 32 young people away, he said, and be buried. Now, a mass grave na King Tom last week because of the kush where they take and he say the number then they go up every day, then they pick people in a street where nobody know they come for can identify them. And according to Ram, he say na tem this now with parliament and self the president for take strong action against the one day where they bring the kush come na the country. Well, before we come back na studio quickly, we they look at on our messages them where we don't send na the program this morning. On the Facebook page, the very first one I go look at, David C. They say, as a nation, the recent loss of 32 young individuals to so the dangerous drug known as Kush is a serious matter that cannot be taken lightly. The impact of losing such a significant number of potential young men and women is akin to facing a pandemic in Sierra Leone. It is crucial that we address this issue with urgency and concerted effort. This one content now we YouTube. They say good morning, Khadija and Mabel. I disagree with the young man in the studio saying that is not a cause of joblessness. It is the main cause. It's because of the youth are out of job that leads to the high rates. All right, Danny Lebon on Facebook, he said to solve the problem is to find or identify the roots of the problem. Can authorities identify the roots and address it? From Josiah Power Thoronka on YouTube, they say the way governments bury the youth is not good. Always talk about human de capital development. The final one we may go take because of time now from Sandra S. M. Gongo is say rehabilitation should be the main focus to help those who are addicted. There's one content on YouTube. They say the government is responsible for all of this because they should have been taking serious action long time ago if they really see us to improve the lives of young people. Well, from their messages, then they way people don't send at the program this morning. Um, we just they come back to the studio guest them because seeing all of their images then they and listening to the person where they in charge of the burial team it clearly shows see not only the figures them they can publish all the time because according to her every week they must be 10 15 and then they go and pick pick them a street if you don't reach to this level parliament now one party people away it calls see 
on a for take serious action going beyond standing on SO 19 and other relevant SO them waiting at the urgent need what we look at and from an opposition point of view how you go go back and report to our leadership say this is getting serious well um, of course it has to start with the SOs because you're not going to stand without uh, a procedure but again like you state it gets to go beyond that and we don't think say in our cause for level get a health emergency and i think say we need for see more of them videos in the back the, i think say that they will even drive more will because definitely we need the political will to make this drive go on people in the see and community government need for take an action and the action is the time is now we cannot wait any long longer and we know say this push effect get a ripple effect would they say not to me? You they say not to you, or not to me picking, or not to my own nephew. <coughs> but you didn't see the, the peer pressure effect in it. You didn't see an effect wherein even people they start them drugs and not even know saying I push them start with. Look the young lady way he say a man here for let smoke. But they not be telling us in a push. But now he asked one later, and now years or months later, and I go back for himself. So the, the time is now, we need to take action, and it starts with the conversation, and the conversation we're having it as we speak, and I think say, it is time for the government to take uh, a pragmatic uh, measure, which is declares a state of, of, of health emergency. Let them go after the culprits then. If you see yourself in this business here, you see yourself, say, you believe say, some, some people in life were destroyed before you become wealthy. If you know, say you're on the bad side of history, and that the people of this country will not look you with a very kind eye. Yeah. You made mention of the dignity of the victims, and earlier we made it up. So now, one of you concerned in that, in as much as one of the call for lay um, authorities and take action for the one that we did in the supply chain, but also the other side of the coin, waiting need for be done for the victim them currently, we we see. Different people and different community don't they take their action as to how then they um, react to them when they take the drugs. Waiting it for be done, especially rehabilitation. I'm happy we asked that question there because um, I, I also ask that question. They say, what you do with the center and carry town where they use for rehabilitate Ebola uh, patients? Them, why we not go use that facility there? Then the, the deputy chair of the social welfare committee right say that we don't start one. Uh, now nah, his things will not declare but a small center so we we'll get forget them conversation there. we need for rehabilitate them young people yeah then people are not for they say and you know, people are not for the force for the lock them picking our house on our room or tie them to chains for rehabilitate them like i say the business is supply and demand driven if the demand not there the supply will stifle then the business go go run down eventually so we need for going to the communities then get the people that are affected we need for get the conversation that we home them so that if you see any signs of that, day, let the people know. Let parents know what's in the signs them, first of all. Then conversation have for they happen regularly. I think, say, uh, I want to applaud you now for start this conversation. And I think, say, now conversation for they happen regularly. Now, now all the media outlets them. Let people they get them to them. Let so family go by them try say, this problem, this sign where they see Pami Pekin, let a call for, let call for intervention. The sooner we will call for the intervention, the day, we sooner we will catch them. We say we need to catch them before they, they run away common house. Because once they become so addictive, then they now will take control of their family, then go left the home. So I think say the conversation needs for start at the homes, and the conversation also needs for start on how we rehabilitate the people that were already they were addicted to the drug. But once we get those people in, in centers, we sure say demand will drop in the communities there. Then after that, at the same time, the car say get for be multi-pronged approach. They will take them back to the one that they bring them, the one that they manufacture them, logo after them, and make sure so they bring them to book. All right, many thanks to the studio this morning. In name now, Honorable Umfa Kuruma, in a, an APC member of parliament, na the Western Urban Block. And if there this morning, we'll be there to talk about the issue we get for do with the effects we don't they happen to young people and when they take past mark drugs. And as we wrap up this edition of the breakfast show, we we'll come over now to the other studio guests, Robert um, Kondema. We think we'll be yourself in word of advice as to wrap up this edition of the discussion. Well, one of our advice, I want to talk to young people, let them disengage in 
and for taking these drugs here. And then um, if we are one force to talk to them, then back they will fulfill all of these fighters, especially at community level and even the, the, the other community stakeholders and um, just the other level support companies. Not to open up with any part of this but they can go and see. So then for us as a watchdog. Where you then see somebody where they sell it and the committee for exposure and expect of any relationship then get and then commit to them. Then for us, he they call either with the police, they then can for they can put arrest on that place state. And also as part of our work, um, we also don't develop a program plan for for dropping centre for counselling and rehabilitation. It's part of our work now we we're supposed to do. Because one of the people will find out where we animate and go to those communities and them. Um, then they then they then they have up then people and they, 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 they say come on here, come on, come on here, come on here. So it's now how long the way before they find and So that is why I'm talking. We need to look at how we can get a youth drop in terms of counseling and rehabilitation there. So it's part of our work. So we have to talk to proper government, the relevant stakeholders and the key players in this the security sector, right. the Ministry of Health, three are let we able to take this in serious. And this week we well, put my pressure to government that they declare a state of health emergency so that they know say this thing don't come out of fun because we young people don't need to disagree. We're not going to sit down. All right. We'll set more and full. Many food. thanks, Robert Kondema, who you have joined me at the studio this morning, who can talk about this kush will not become a problem among Sierra Leone and especially the young people. Well, if you online TV, we'll continue with this conversation and we'll continue for bringing more people in where we can talk about the issue. Continue for watch Liberty Online TV, continue for share we programs them as they bring count on um, in timely and very important discussion them. Well, we go come back and we can look at another issue. Also, they can talk to the ambassador of Ireland to Sierra Leone. We can talk about the diplomatic development programs them where the Ireland they support salon bots and other issues them where they don't they support in terms of um, the economy, in terms of strengthening Sierra Leone democracy. All of that the ambassador will can tell with this morning inside the breakfast show. Mina Francis Ben Kaifala, the Commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Liberty TV Online is an amazing platform. See you at the top, Liberty TV. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Being a CDI at Tunis, the National Publicity Section, All People's Congress, AC. Are they always on Liberty TV? I encourage you all for continue for watch Liberty TV on all social media platforms. Now, John Coca, Miller, the executive director for Family Talk International. Kudos to Liberty Online TV. I believe it's a very good initiative. And we as Sarah will for support any Sarah Leone initiative with the move the country forward. Viewers, I want to recommend to everybody Liberty Online TV. So if you're not beginning watching it, now for join, sign up, begin go on a regular basis to Liberty Online TV. Me na Dr. Tonya Musa, me na lecturer, communications and media experts. I de watch the Liberty TV online and tell you say na the best platform for get credible, accurate and reliable information all the time. Make a you party so that you no go miss any opportunity for true information. Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Nafibi Antwil, broadcast journalist, actress, and filmmaker. Liberty Online TV. Hmm. I don't call it T if fine, but it's not just what's in it look like inside. It's the content when they bring to the public. I encourage we all subscribe to Liberty Online TV. Subscribe to them page them on Facebook, on YouTube, all their social media platforms, and on YouTube. Also click on the notification bell so that any time we can online, it will help you follow you know what's in the movie. Liberty Online TV, all day, every day. Hello, Sularinians. This is now on our favorite film director, Margaret Success. Um, a day at today, on Liberty TV, I encourage every Sularinian to go online and follow this page. Now, a very wonderful platform. We come for take Sularinian entertainment and every other sector to a different, different level. So please, Go online, YouTube, Facebook, go click Liberty Online TV. This is Liberty Online TV, powered by Orange Sierra Leone. Orange.
All right, yeah. welcome back. It's still the breakfast show on Liberty Online TV. And we, are, we tell you earlier, I say, in this second half of the program, we can talk to the Ireland Ambassador on Salon, we are Ambassador Edian Fitzpatrick. Here this morning, we can talk about the party business where they between the two countries. Them. As the diplomatic relationship where they between Ireland and Salon, go way back from the year 2000, outside the Ireland be opened and Development Corporation Office in Salon inside 2005. But before that, we will get some Irish missionaries them where we don't can a salon outside them they provide quality education and health care now the country. Well currently the five year plan we then get been done done and they develop other five year plan we then go work with the government of salon. And the area we then focus for work on get for do with women them, especially gender for women and girl picking them. They also they support democracy, good governance and other aspects them. Well for we can know waiting and waiting the Embassy for Ireland on the Duna Salon so far. It's a pleasure to have you in the studio this morning, Ambassador Fitzpatrick. Thank you, and an absolute pleasure to be here. And thanks right. for having me on this morning. Yeah, sure. I just told our listeners we are here to discuss about the bilateral relationship between Ireland and Sierra Leone. But before delving into that, let's just know how has it been for you in Sierra Leone. Yeah, um, I'm here now just over six months. Uh, I arrived back at the end of August, beginning of September. Uh, my wife and I, Neve and I, w w were here. Um, but it's not my first time in Sierra Leone. Uh, I worked in Sierra Leone back in 96, 1996 to 97. Um, at that time, I worked with an NGO, um, a British NGO called Merlin, Medical Emergency Relief International. And I worked up in Shigwema, and then in, in Kailahun, and then in Kenema. Uh, so it's not my first time in Sierra Leone, and it was wonderful to get back. It's, it's a huge honour, it's a huge privilege <clears throat> to represent my country here and uh, to be back in Sierra Leone after all of those years. So looking back from those years, you were here working in Shebwema and other parts of the country. What has changed in terms of development? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot has changed. I, I was lucky, I think it was in uh, October, November, I got to go back up to, to Kenema and Kailon. Um, and one thing that has certainly changed is the road infrastructure. Uh, what used to take is maybe three, four hours to get from Kenema to Shigwema, now you do very, very quickly. Um, and I think other things like, I've noticed, I think we have the, the Okadas, um, they're everywhere, but no, which I think it's a fantastic thing in that I think you've about 1.2 million people employed driving these bikes, but they link up the whole country. I think now villages are not so remote anymore in that you have these guys, you hop on the back of a bike and you're in the nearest city in our nearest town within, you know, half an hour, an hour. I think that has kind of, that's a big substantive change. But when I look at society and what's happening there, um, I, I think there's been huge strides made uh, in the last few years on, on the whole issue of gender empowerment. And you know, I, credit needs to be given uh, for the um, radical inclusion, uh, free education, there's been a lot moving there. I think under the previous term of the government, we got a, an additional million children into the school system. And I think there's been a whole mindset change children's place is in school, is in education and I think now there's a real pressure on, or not pressure, but there's a real people understand, you need to get your child to school, the child needs to be educated and you know that, that's, that's been very encouraging and then the GWE Act Again, like that's a substantive change. It's, it's quite transformative now that 30% of women in politics, sorry, of people in politics are women. That's, that's, that, that, that's big. That, that brings about, I think, the sort of change that's needed. And look, it, I think it's, it's overdue, um, but you know, getting, I think again, we're getting that mind shift that, that you know, women's place, it's not just in the home. They should be out there. They should be representing. They should be vocal. Um, and we, we support all of that. Um, we've been involved in the whole process of working up the GWE Act. But then also now we're supporting the, the Women Parliamentarian Group. We've kind of resurrected that. The, there's a, a group also for uh, women in, in local politics and in the councils. But uh, encouraging as well, one of our partner organisations, we're supporting the Young Women in Governance network. So we're building that pipeline to make sure that we have all these women leaders 
young women, uh, 18, 19, 20, uh, one of the most encouraging um, interactions I've been having to date is, is working with those women and hearing their voice and, and hearing their concerns. I think they're going to make a big, big difference. Uh, you've, al you've always had powerful women in public life, but now I think you're getting the numbers, you're getting the volume. and. Those are, those are some of the changes I, I can see. So yeah, um, I, I, that's not, in, in, in highlighting all of those very positive changes, I'm not underestimating either the, the challenges that are still there. And I know people are finding it hard. You know, there is inflation, the, all these global shocks that are making life difficult for people. But certainly I think we can, we can also point to, to significant progress uh, in a number of areas. Oh, we'll talk more about the development programs and where are you now in terms of um, strengthening and deepening the bilateral relationship between Ireland and Sierra Leone. But let's go back to a significant date in your calendar, which is the 17th of March. I yeah. know it is a very significant date for you as um, an embassy in Ireland as a whole, celebrating one of your patrons, St. Patrick, who was, who was brought in as a slave to the UK exactly. at the age of 16 years. Yeah. And last week you held a dinner, a cocktail in honor of St. Patrick. This is the first time hosting you and it is a privilege. Kindly just start by telling our viewers who is St. Patrick and why do you celebrate March 17th every year? Yeah, so St. Patrick is our patron saint, as you said. Um, he's also the patron saint of Nigeria, which is interesting. Um, but so, yeah, he, he was St. Patrick. He was um, back in the fifth century. He was, as you as you pointed out, he was taken as a slave from England, brought to Ireland. I think he worked mainly as a shepherd, uh, minding cattle, minding sheep. Um, he got back to England, he got educated, and then he came back bringing Christianity. Um, he's also credited to have got, got rid of snakes out of Ireland. I don't know how he did that, or we're not, we're not sure how, how exactly that worked, but the, the legend would have it that he, he, um, he, he moved the snakes out of Ireland. Um, but yeah, no, he, he brought Christianity to Ireland, um, and for that then, uh, we, we've been a very much predominantly Catholic country, um, so that Catholic faith has, has, has carried through. Um, and this is the day that we pick as our national day, and we celebrate, it is celebrated right across the world. Ireland, we are very, the size of Ireland, it's very, very close to, to being almost exactly the same size as Sierra Leone. On the island of Ireland, we have a population of 7 million. Here you have, what, 8.5, 9 million. There's a lot of similarities, geographic, demographic. Um, we're also the youngest nation in Europe in terms of our, 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 our demographic profile. So a lot of similarities, but with the, we've also shared aspects in our history as well. Um, we, we had a very bad famine back in 1840, and during that famine we lost, we had a population of, of about 8 million, higher than it is now, back before the, the, the famine. We lost about 3 million people. They reckon somewhere between 1.5 and, and 2 million died, but then another million emigrated, uh, mainly to to the United States, often too to, to our neighbours to, into England. Um, but because of that then, we've had a huge diaspora. So while we say there's a population of about 7 million on the island, we have a, a diaspora of somewhere between 70 and 80 million across the world. Big population centres in the US, in Australia, in New Zealand, uh, in South America. In that diaspora, we had tens of thousands of missionaries uh, brothers, sisters, and in your opening introduction, you, you mentioned the, the, the huge number of priests, nuns, uh, sisters who came here to Sierra Leone to, to, to share the faith, but, but importantly too, to bring education and health services. So the, the, when we pull all of that together, we have, uh, I think it's one of those unusual national days in that right around the world it's celebrated. So in a lot of the, 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 the cities in America, in Boston, they paint the river green. They put dye in the river and the river turns green. Green is our national color, I should say. And, and so we try to green the world um, for the day. And we say on, on St. Patrick's Day, everybody is Irish. So everybody is welcome. And we, we do, we like to party. So last uh, Thursday, as you said, um, we had a, a bit of a celebration uh, up in Lac Villa 
and it was great. It was, and another thing, we have a reputation for being good at partying too. So we like to get together. We have a very strong culture, singing, dancing. We do all of that. Um, and so, yeah, we, we do celebrate. We, we, we get everybody together. The other thing, uh, on St. Patrick's Day, there's always a, a meeting. Uh, we're we're honoured in that the, uh, the, the US, um, the president of the US will always meet our president, our, oh, sorry, not our president, but our, our, our head of state, our, sorry, our Taoiseach, our, our prime minister. Uh, so that's a, that, that's a standing piece on, on, on the agenda. And it's not many countries that, that has that sort of access. Most of our ministers, they go right around the world on that day. And then they join with different countries, different governments to celebrate. We were fortunate this year, we had the, um, our, our African director. Uh, he oversees the work, uh, all our work across the African continent. We have 12 embassies across Africa. But our African director, he came here, a gentleman called Kyle O'Sullivan. So he came here for a few days and celebrated with us. But then again, the government were very good in that he got to meet with four of the ministers. He got to meet with the mayor. And we got a good chance. He had a good chance then to talk about our plans for the coming five years. Because that was going to be my next question sure. about the significance of observing your own national holiday in Sierra Leone, for example. What will Sierra Leoneans relate to celebrating the St. Patrick's Day? Well, so we would have our own celebration and we had about 200 people with us that evening. A couple of things that we marked in that, that, that celebration, we have one of our sisters, um, she would be known to a lot of people I think in Sierra Leone, Sister Teresa McKeown. This year she celebrated 70 years in Sierra Leone. So she came out as a 24 year old lady. Now, I shouldn't give the poor lady's name out, and I hope she's not annoyed with me, but um, this year, she's 70 years here in Sierra Leone, working with the people of Sierra Leone. I think she was given the, the Order of Ramkal back in, I think, 2017-18, you know, the highest civil honour for, for, for a person. And I noticed we, uh, at these occasions, we normally play our own anthem, and then we play the Sierra Leone anthem. And, and I noticed that uh, Sister Teresa, for our own anthem, she was kind of singing along nicely, but for the Sierra Leone anthem, she was giving it loads. She was singing it loud and clear. Um, so yeah, there's that sort of partnership, and we try to celebrate that. Uh, we, we celebrate the contribution that, that, that has been made over past years. But I think we also use that, that occasion to, uh, to look to the future as well. We were very honoured. Uh, our guest of honour was, was um, Minister Timothy Cabot, the, the Minister for Foreign Affairs. And in his speech, like again, he did that. He, he kind of recognised the contribution that has been made, but then also he was highlighting our, our now strong partnership. Um, Sierra Leone at the moment, uh, you have a seat on the Security Council, the kind of the highest body in the world on, on, on security peace issues. Um, and yeah, you, you've took that seat on the 1st of January and the minister mentioned, I mentioned the importance of that. In, in a world where we have so many challenges, you know, we have the conflict in Gaza, we have the situation in Ukraine, it's very important that small, strong states like Sierra Leone are there around that table trying to broker peace, trying to make progress. So, yeah, um, it's, it's all of that. So, sorry, I'm not sure if I've answered your question, nice. but uh, yeah, that's, that's um, to give you some sense too of, of our partnership and the kind of mutual respect. We would feel as well that in those fora, we, we hold a lot of the same kind of principles and the same values. Um, so Sierra Leone has been very strong, for instance, in the whole situation in Gaza, on again insisting on humanitarian access, on, on calling for a humanitarian ceasefire. These are the things that we, we do, uh, you know, at our capital and, 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 and into New York. So, you know, we feel we're very much like-minded and, and kind of coming at a lot of these global issues in a very similar sort of way. Let's talk about deepening the diplomatic relations between mm. Ireland and Sierra Leone. These relations started way back in the year 2000, and we've had several ambassadors who have come in, did their own bid, and left. Now you are here as the um, ambassador from Ireland to Sierra Leone. Aside the area of women's empowerment and girls, how will you look through, I know you have a strategic plan, a development plan you've um, um, worked on. Which other areas will you focus on in terms of establishing or deepening the relations between Ireland and Sierra Leone? Yeah, um, so, yeah, so with our new plan, that will run from this year or later this year, 2024, out to 2028. 
Um, we'll do, again, because we've had success in gender, you know, supporting women and adolescent girls, getting them back into education, we'll keep doing a lot of that gender work, a lot of it focused in and around education as well. Um, you've mentioned there earlier, you know, some of the aspects of our work. So we, we'd have reasonable, good programming in food and nutrition. You mentioned our governance work. So those are kind of the, the key areas. We've, we've built up good partnerships on that, in those areas. So we want to stay with those partners. A lot of them, local partners. You know, you can work with UN agencies, you can work for, with the international NGOs, and, and we have good partnerships with them as well. But increasingly, too, we're trying to identify and work with and support and strengthen local organisations. So we have some very, very good partnerships um, with local NGOs. So we'll be trying to do more of that, trying to, to increase the amount that we, 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 we deliver through local um, NGOs. So that's one kind of difference. It's what we, in, in the term we use in international development is localisation, where we, we try to you know, back support local institutions. They know the people best. They're often best placed to deliver to people. The other piece I think that we, we will be trying to do more of is around the whole issue of climate and, and you know we're, we're, we're all sadly we're, we're faced with the increased threat of climate and, and we've seen some of the devastating impacts here in, in uh, Sierra Leone already um, with the landslide in 2017 these, uh, well, well, this is the, the world we're heading into, the, the, this, this whole climate change piece. So we are looking at trying to do more in that space. Now, climate, it, it does impact right across all sectors. So we'll probably look at, at certainly the whole issue of agriculture and getting in behind the President's initiative on feeds alone and how we might contribute better and stronger to that very welcome initiative. Um, so that's kind of the climate, food, security, agriculture piece. The other bit that we are beginning to, to explore and, and, and look at potential is, is um, climate and energy. Um, and I'm conscious, you know, that energy is, is essential. Uh, you know, you need access to modern energy. Um, so that has to move. And, and I think we all, on a day-to-day -day basis, we, we know these challenges, uh, both in the cities and, and, and in, in the rural context. So we're looking at again we're exploring with partners the potential to bring uh, for instance solar lighting to every household in Sierra Leone how would we work with government to help make that happen and there's a today tomorrow I think there's an energy conference on Wednesday there's going to be a one-day workshop on how we deliver energy solutions for the women of Sierra Leone you know clean cooking uh, these clean cooking stoves they're not usually expensive but they really can make women's lives a lot lot easier so those are the kind of areas, new areas, that we're kind of looking at as well. Uh, climate and, and food security and feed alone, but then as well energy and, and delivering energy solutions to all households, particularly rural households right across Sierra Leone. Empowering women and girls in mm. Sierra Leone has been a core priority in your strategic program. Now you are talking about some of the gains you've made. How will you um, describe the impact your commitment has made in empowering women and girls in Sierra Leone? Well, when you say the gains we made, uh, yeah, well, uh, we, it's not, we can't take much credit. Um, we support local partners, we support the government. So I think the credit needs to go where the credit is due. And that's, that's often so much with government and, and the strong leadership. I think both the President and the First Lady have been very strong, hands off our girls. You know, they, they've delivered a very, very clear and strong message from the top. That, that's, that's a very fundamental building block. We can't take any credit for, for that. That's, that's your government you know, doing, and it's, that's global leadership. That, that's leadership that's been picked up right across Africa, I think. You know, Sierra Leone is building a good reputation for being strong in this area and pushing ahead with, with women's empowerment. Um, but yeah, I, I said already as well, while we've made, there's a definite momentum there, there's potential to do more. We need to go further. The, the, the lot of women in Sierra Leone, it's not easy. It's not, you know, we've a long way to go still. I think there's opportunities coming up. You know, the, we're looking again at the Child Act. That's a real opportunity again to push ahead, with, with, to keep that momentum going and build that momentum. Um, the, 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 the revision of the Constitution, that's an ongoing 
piece as well. What can we do in the constitution to make women's lot a lot easier, a lot better, to give, her, give women, the, you know, there's been good movement again on the Land Act. These are all areas that, that, that are helping move gender, move women's lot in society forward. Implementing the, 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 the GWE Act, the, you know, so it's great. We've really made that big, big breakthrough, as, as I was mentioning earlier, on the governance side. But what about, you know, in the private sector now, getting more women into leadership positions in the private sector? And, and what about in state institutions? So within every ministry, now that there's this kind of, um, how would you say, small groups working on how do we translate the, the GWE Act into the day-to-day -day reality? Departments. Uh, so I would like to think, and it's already happening, that you've now got more women ambassadors. You now have more women directors. So you now have women around the cabinet, uh, more women around the cabinet table. The other thing I think that is very encouraging as well, you also have younger ministers. So across Africa, I think the average age of politicians, and no disrespect, I'm an old man myself, so um, I think the average age is about 62, 63. The average pop age of population across Africa is 19. So the people who represent the, the, the broad population, there's a long gap there. So when we see that 10 of your cabinet members now are under 40, they're bringing, and I've, I've met and I, I know a lot of these wonderful people, they're bringing a lot of new ideas, they're bringing energy and, and it's, you know, trying to get behind that, trying to get behind those good ideas, trying to get that momentum that we were talking about, particularly around gender, but all these other areas as well. Um, this is the potential. The, you know, we need to do that. We need to get behind the government, get behind these, these uh, you know, evolving programmes, the big five game changers, the, uh, you know, the, now the more recently, the medium, uh, medium term plan. Yeah. You know, that's a, that took a lot of work um, and confidence the Minister for Planning and Development in, in get her, her and her team getting that over the line uh, before the end of last year. We, we launched, or they launched in January, February. So there's a lot there to work with. We have a good so. policy-rich environment. Mm -hmm. But now we need to get on with implementation. From the Irish point of view, we'll be trying, um, again, with, with our African director in last week, we are looking at we're hoping uh, our, our budgets are set on an annual basis but certainly the intention is to increase our budgets um, you know it won't be huge increases but let's keep growing and um, we are increasing our staff and getting additional staff uh, I'll have a new person coming on board an additional person we have a team of 22 uh, at the embassy so we'll be moving to 23 I'd hope we'll be moving to 24 25 very quickly so we're, we're growing uh, and yeah that's that's all also you're positive expanding your programs in Sierra Leone. Yeah, well, so increased funding and increased staffing. So yeah, we'll be we'll be trying. Yeah, we'll, so we'll be trying to uh, to get to get behind the country, behind the government more and more. Yeah. Talking about budgeting and expanding your finances and projects in Sierra Leone, even though you don't want to take the credit for the gains that have been made so far, how would you describe management of these funds? Is it um, are we achieving value for money into these project projects? Yeah, we, we try, um, and and the reason we try, and we have to try very hard. If if the if if our if my public back home um, feel that we're not getting value for money, we're in trouble. Uh, we have very strong control systems in Parliament. We have a public accounts committee. And believe me, um, if, if things go wrong, they know uh, and we get in trouble. So we would have, with our, our partners, before we'll enter into a partnership, but we'll do, um, uh, it's called an OCAT, it's, it's basically a, an assessment of the partners' uh, systems, um, whether they're strong, whether they're, you know, they have a good accountancy division, whether they have, they do their audits, whether, and if they're weak, we'll still, we may still support them, but we'll put in some additional money to get a new accountant, to get, you know, an additional accountant or that. So we're very, we have to be very cautious. We have to be very clear that the money is used well. I'm not saying that all the money is used perfectly. I'm not saying that there's areas where you would say, oh, is that the best use of the money? Uh, but we are trying, and I'm very conscious. Um, in, in, a, in Sierra Leone, unfortunately, the government don't have huge budgets, so we really, both with our own international support, but equally, I think, with the, with the government's money, we need 
we need all to work together to make sure we get bang for buck and that we, we are delivering programs that, that make a difference in the lives of the people. W with my own team, I often say, okay, you're, you're saying we should support this, but my, one of my fundamental questions is, well, how does it impact on the lives of people in the villages? Does it get the money out to the people in the villages or the people in the town? Because the there's, poverty in, 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 uh, there's poverty in towns as well. And, and you know, so we need, to, we, I think we all, uh, we owe it to each other to keep that check going. How does this deliver real services, real change for people in the villages, in the towns? Does it make a difference? Will it make their lives better? So, I know yeah. the, the, the embassy, you have your monitoring mechanism in terms mm. of the programs you are supporting the government of Sierra Leone. In terms of reaching the right beneficiaries, as you stated earlier, people in remote villages that really need some of these supports, going through your monitoring mechanism, are you satisfied with the way these programs are being implemented and the beneficiaries, are they the actual ones that are supposed to benefit from some of these supports? Um, yes. Um, takes a lot of work. So, for instance, we would meet with every one of our partners. We'd have about 19, 20 partners. We'd meet with every one of them on a, on a quarterly basis. Okay. So we ask, what's working? What's not working? And if this piece, because of there was a flood and you couldn't get there, th then we say, okay, we, we, we won't be doing that, but tell me what you want to do instead. And, and so we're constantly adjusting, we're constantly refining the programs, making sure that, that we deliver, that, that, that we're getting the money and the support out there to communities. Is it perfect? We try when we get the, the proposals, we look through it. Is there waste? Oh, there's too many workshops. Oh, there's too many, you know, there's too many DSAs. Uh, you know, we try as best we can to pull that in. But we're also conscious, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's not where everybody is struggling. It's hard to say no all the time, so sometimes we give a little, but overall, what I'm saying, we, we try to do that reality check. Is this going to make a difference? So two the, people. The, 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 there are messages waiting yeah. for you, but because of time, I will just take one of these messages that is coming from a viewer called Fode Mustafa Toure. He's asking, what is the stance of Ireland on the democracy of the country, particularly on the electoral aspect and the June 24th elections? Yeah. Look, the, the last year was very much dominated by the elections and the, and, and the, the follow-on from it. Um, I was there when, when the government, uh, I think there was strong leadership on both sides in, in reaching the agreement on national unity. And I was there the night that they, they signed on this. Um, I think it's very important that, that we, we make that agreement on national unity work. And again, I compliment the leadership on both sides, and, and uh, from the from the president uh, on, on, on the uh, SLPP side, uh, uh, for Kamara on, on the uh, APC side, uh, it's it's not easy, you know. There's there's, but I think we do have to move forward, um, and I think the, the the agreement on national unity the, mm -hmm. within that there is. You know, there's provision to, to, to work through these issues. There is provision to, to review what went on, and there's a real provision there as well to, to, to take those lessons and let's, when we get to 2028, let's have an, an election. Sierra Leone has a reputation. It, it's scored on, on, on an annual basis as being one of the most peaceful countries in Africa. Um, and I love the way, you know, the, 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 that religious tolerance, uh, everybody gets on. Um, I was here during the Civil War. Nobody wants to go back to that kind of sure. conflict. It doesn't, it really. So I, I, I salute all political leaders in the country in, in now, you know, working hard together to, to, to review the situation and to come up with a solution and a way forward. So to fully look, uh, not ideal, it was a difficult year, but, but let's not dwell on the past, let's look at how we move forward and, and yes. let's use that mechanism, the, the agreement on national unity, to, to come up with solutions that will ensure that Sierra Leone yeah. stays on a strong path towards, towards prosperity. That, let's focus on development. Uh, let's, let's, you have to do the politics, mm -hmm. but let's get together, get behind 
the, the government now to, to bring development to this country, much, much needed development to the country. All right, so as we wrap up this edition of The Breakfast Show, I'll just leave you with this message from C4D Media Newspaper. Um, they say, Khadija and Mabel sounds great in this interview as always. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, on your utmost contribution to Sierra Leone at every level. However, Sierra Leone is caught up in the middle between democracy, the June 24th elections, and its aftermath in terms of credibility. Where is the island in this political gymnastic? Yeah, I, I think I'm kind of, that's a similar yeah. <laughs> question to, to, to what Fode was saying. Um, mm -hmm. Look, uh, I'm not, I, I don't think any country has the perfect democracy. Uh, we're, we're struggling globally. Um, countries that, that were often seen as the bastions of, of democracy are struggling. It's, it's not an easy piece. And, and you know, Sierra Leone, my own country, we, we've been celebrating our, our own 100th anniversary of, of the foundation of the state. It takes time. We had a civil war. At the beginning of our independence, we had a civil war. And civil wars are, oh, they're so destructive. Um, we need to hold the peace. We need to work and build our democracy. And, and uh, yeah, again, as I said to you, I think there's strong political leadership on both sides. Mm -hmm. There's a commitment now to let's get this working. And yeah, I'd love to get that, that increased focus you know, you need a, a strong opposition. Yeah. yeah, you need a strong government. There's yeah. there's absolute room for both. Those working together, that's democracy. You know, opposition holding government to account, civil society holding government to account, all working together. But be clear on the goal. And I think again, the government have been good in putting out the vision. And now let's get behind it. Let's work together. Let's work towards 2028. If people want to change, then that's that's democracy. People what? vote and they decide. So let's let's try to not spend too much time on on, on the, the the past. Well, you have to learn from the past. Let's let's not let's not ignore it. But let's try and build forward. I think rather than than spending too much uh, time on the past. Ambassador, you just made mention of working towards 2028, and hmm. that will be determined by the work, the recommendations mm. of the Trapatite Committee who are currently working with three co-chairs, one from the APC and the ruling SLPP and the UN Residence Coordinator yeah. sitting in that committee. We've seen funding from the U.S. government through the U.S. aid and they are working actually. They've met, they've signed the terms of reference mm. for them to look into the elections of the 2023 and future elections, that is 2028. Exactly. Yeah. In terms of committing to supporting the Trapatite, is the Irish Embassy committed to supporting them if need be? Well, no, we're, we're actually supporting. Um, okay. well, we are providing funding already for some of that work. Um, but we're, we're providing that support through UNDP. So we had we had provided a good bit of support for the for the election back in, in June 2023. Some of that funding, we, we didn't spend it all. So we've kind of reassigned that money now. Remember what I was saying about we look back at budgets and if they're not cheap. So we are, there's some money already going into that process. Because we're trying to agree our 2024-2028 funding, we won't have that money available available for another month or two so we have that UNDP support presently but then we will we'll, we'll be we are talking with UNDP talking with government on, on what additional funds may be needed so we are we will support that process and more importantly looking ahead again in I hope in in four or five months time we'll have the recommendations we'll have agreement on those recommendations and then the important piece as well about funding the implementation of those recommendations whether those recommendations then as well uh, necessitate constitutional reform all of those issues can come into play but what I would say we're here to support that process as I said well done to all political leaders in, in, in putting in the agreement on national unity Let's get behind it. Let's make it work. So, yeah, we, we are supporting. We will continue to support. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I can safely make that commitment. All right, Ambassador. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Having you for the very first time in our studios this morning. Hopefully, we'll be talking to you from sure. time to time when need be from the embassy's perspective and we'll be inviting you to talk on some issues sure. from your development program and some of the gains the Sierra Leone government yes. have made through your support. It's been a pleasure having you here this morning, especially a very crucial time like this. Very early in the morning, you have to wake up just to catch up with the appointments. We are honored. 
No, no, um, and thanks. And, and look, the, what I was saying about holding government to account and working together, the fourth estate, the media, you're a critical part of this. So we're, we're very happy. I'm very happy to be here this morning. Um, it's lovely to have this platform and this opportunity to celebrate our national day. So I, I have to say happy St. Patrick's Day. I noticed yesterday uh, the Annie White School. Yeah. Again, Irish founder, hundred and very proud history, 175 years. All the leaders, all the women that came out of that school, that's fantastic but that's I suppose you know when we look at celebrating St. Patrick's Day across the world it's the likes of the Annie White schools that's the legacy that's what and that's the positive so we want to build off that that national day that those positives that that Ireland has put out in the world and and we want to do more and we particularly we want to do more with our partner countries Sierra Leone is a strong partner country in 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 our global work um, we look forward to to, to growing and strengthening that relationship uh, further over the coming years. I'd be more than happy to come back in too and talk about, you know, I know there's all of these development issues and you could spend a programme on this issue or that issue. I'm more than happy to contribute. Yeah, we'll be happy as well to have you. No. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Yes, now so they end the programme, the breakfast show for today. That's now be the ambassador for Ireland to Sierra Leone, Ambassador Edan Fitzpatrick. He be there with me at the programme this morning. And they talk about the St. Patrick's Day celebration, what they can do every year, March 17. And self so tell with their own stance in terms of development, then what they support the Salon government for do and how they're committed for increase their budget to salon. Well now then the program continue for watch all the programs and continue for share programs them so that more people go be part of the Liberty Online TV family for get credible and authentic information of various topics them what they deal with. Mina Kadija Bangura they say have a blessed day. Alright and continue for like and follow Liberty Online TV and all the platform them. Osai on the get with till we meet again Mebel Kabadi say have a good week.